Good morning, everyone. A blessed morning for you. A gracious morning in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to touch your life afresh. He's going to bless you afresh. And prepare you for the ministry that is before you. You will not miss your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you at this time and bless your name. What a great, mighty, loving God you are. You've chosen us so that we'll bear fruit and our fruit will remain. We're asking, Lord, you impart Everyone, by your spirit, even this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm your word in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your amen reach heaven. Amen. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Today we come again to the strengthening power of the Spirit of God. You see, whatever we do in the church, the strength has to come from the Spirit of God. Look at Acts chapter 20, and I'm reading verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Stop there for a moment. The Holy Ghost has made you overseers. That word here there does not refer to every dick and Harry that carries the Bible. The people that carry the Bible, and the Bible does not carry them. There are people that speak of Christ, and Christ says, I never knew them. Before the Holy Ghost can make anyone a leader, a pastor, overseer, a minister, over the flock, that person must have salvation. And when Paul was speaking, he was speaking from the grounds that he himself had been saved as a Pharisee. As a member of the Sanhedrin, as a persecutor, as an injurious person, as a sinner who had not been touched and transformed by the Spirit of the Lord, there's no way that the Holy Ghost will make somebody unsaved, somebody not born again, an overseer to feed the church of God. Those who depend on charm. Those who depend on tradition, those who depend on what they can get from the leaf, from the bark of the tree, from the bunch, uh, whatever, maybe lizard, put everything together, have wasteland, the Holy Ghost cannot make them overseers over the flock. The people that have to go and look for something from the herbalists. Can you think about that? That somebody has to go to, you know, all these uh, people in the village and then get something and bury at the pulpit so that so that the work that he is doing will prosper. The Holy Ghost, he follows you about. He knows you. And he knows where we go. The people that are looking for miracles by all means. And they have to bury something there. So that as the worms are getting up. Then the people will be flocking to their local, we can't call it church, to their local congregation. The Holy Ghost cannot anoint them. And cannot make them overseers of the church. You know the people who live licentious lives, selfish lives, fleshly lives, and they have immorality in their bosom. 
They have the morality in their heart. They have the morality in their work, everything they do. And the people they commit those sins with, they know that man is not a clean man. Now the Holy Ghost knows that. When we talk about being a minister, when we talk about being a pastor, when we talk about being an overseer, it's not an overseer made by denominational leader. The overseer made by the Spirit of God. That's why it says in verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, I must ask myself, because I know my life, I know my heart, I know my tendency, I know everything about me more than the people that call me Pastor Dr. William F. Komoi. What do they know? All they know is the, what I say. All they know is the word I speak. And all they know is what I give out from the Bible, read the Bible, and they say, Dr. Kumoye. But the Holy Ghost knows me, knows my heart, knows my life, knows where I go that other people will not know. I must ask myself what the life I live with the profession I made, and with all the places I travel to, with the preaching I do, with the praying for the seed I do, is it of the Holy Ghost or is just of another power? Thank God it's of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let somebody shout, Amen. Amen! As the Lord knows me, so he knows you. So he knows all our brethren now online. He knows where we are. He knows where we're congregating. He knows where we have been. And he knows the kind of power we're depending upon. I hope you check your life. And you check your up and down. And you understand in your heart. You take heed, therefore, unto yourself and then unto all the flock you're not just watching over the flock you're not just watching over the congregation number one you watch over yourself and if a man is not in control of his life he cannot be in control of the congregation if a man is not watching over his life over his behavior over his character, over his lifestyle. If a man is not watching, if a woman is not watching over her salvation, her sanctification, watching over, she, over what she's got from the scriptures, watching over the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. He's not watching over himself. He's careless. He's prayerless. He's sinful. How can he watch over the church of the living God? Number one, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. When we don't have the scriptures, we have to feed them with news from the media. When we don't have the scriptures, we have to feed them, unfortunately, the worms we gather from traditional stories and parables and all those things. But if the church is going to be fed, you feed the church of God with the word of God, which he as purchased with a own blood. Think about that, that the church is purchased with the blood of Christ, so precious, so peculiar, that the church is purchased by the blood of his own begotten son. And therefore, because you know how precious, how peculiar, the church is purchased church, you feed them what the word of God. Now, it's the Holy Ghost who appoints that anoints. It's the Holy Ghost 
who appoints and anoints the baptizes and he burns every chaff out of our life it's the holy ghost that has brought us in is the one that also cares for us cultivates us and he comforts us in the holy ghost that directs in the holy ghost that brings the dynamite in our heart is the Holy Ghost that empowers us for ministry. Everything we do, the energy, the empowerment, the encouragement comes from the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that makes us focus, that we don't deviate. We don't go here and there. It's the Holy Ghost that makes us Fruitful is the Holy Ghost that makes us say, My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. It's the Holy Ghost that guides us into all truth. It's the Holy Ghost that guides us into the field of service. It's the Holy Ghost that brings more grace, more grace, much grace into our lives and the Holy Ghost himself that heals us the abiding spirit the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead he enters into us he dwells in us and the one that quickens a mortal body is the Holy Ghost that intercedes for us so that if we're faithful in ministry if we are following his direction in ministry, he is the one that intercedes for us. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us joy in service. Sometimes there are songs on the way. Sometimes there is persecution even for ministry. Sometimes um, God heals the sick through you. And even the people that are healed, they might, you might hear some things, they persecute. And for you to have joy in the ministry of the word, it's the Holy Ghost that gives us that joy. It's the Holy Ghost that keeps us at the very center of the will of God, the keeping spirit. And it is the spirit that liberates us. They might uh, bring uh, Peter and John into prison. Why? Because they stole? No. Because they were lawless? No. Because they healed a man that had been paralyzed from birth. Can you think about that? But it's the Holy Ghost that liberates us from that prison. And the angel of the Lord went into that uh, prison and said go out early this morning and go tell them and teach them again the words of life is the holy ghost uh, that uh, makes us to be liberated like that is the holy ghost that keeps us moving moving mountain on the way move that mountain and move beyond the mountain it's the holy ghost that is so mighty in our lives that no matter the might of the enemy no matter the power of the enemy is the holy ghost that says you'll have you'll be mightier mightier than your mountain Mount, mightier than your problem mightier than whatever confronts you it is the holy ghost and it nourishes us every time and it nourishes us every time and it nourishes us you know if you are not nourished you're, you'll be anemic you'll be powerless you'll be impotent what can you do if there's no nourishment for your body but for the soul for the spirit is the nourishing of the holy spirit that makes us go on. and it is the overcoming spirit outpoured outpoured upon us that is what makes us keep going and i pray afresh the lord will pour his spirit upon you in jesus name Amen. the only spirit that makes us prevail i will tell you stories after stories from the time uh, God um, chose me to do his work and the little I do here, the little I do there, I could tell you things, stories that, of things that would have prevailed over me. 
of people that would have prevailed over me, of problems that would have prevailed over me. No need to tell the story. The point is, I'm here today because of the prevailing spirit that abides in me. And you'll be there any time you are called to do what you need to do, you will be there at your post of duty. And the things and the people that think they'll overpower you, prevail on you, never, never. When the Holy Ghost is there, he'll make you a prevailing minister in Jesus' name. And it's the Holy Spirit that makes you quick and quicken, sharp. You think and you think quick. And anything you need to say, I didn't know that before. I didn't know they'll ask that question before. Quick, the Holy Ghost will come upon your life. You know, we oh, are uh, in Moscow, Russia. Great, great miracles happened. And there was somebody there. Apart from the miracle of the 25-year-old, um, you know, paralysis that was healed, the ministers decided they would come together and they would ask questions. No limitation. They want to ask questions from anywhere. This one asked, when were you saved? I answered. This one asked, how were you called into the ministry? I answered. This one asked, and they were asking good regular questions. Then somebody raised up their hand, and the moderator pointed at him, and he said, the man had never seen any black man from anywhere from Africa, from America, he had never seen any black man. I was the first black man he was seen, minister. And then he said, I have a question. I said, please go ahead, ask your question. He said, why? Are you able to do this? When you are a black man, it was straightforward. How can a black man do you what you're doing? Tell me the secret of the black man. You know, you could have been offended, but that was his level. People ask questions according to their level. And you answer them according to their And so I said, thank you very much. I said, look at the keyboard, the organ there. I said, yes, I can see. I said, God has composed a music that can only be played by the white keys and the black keys. That, that music originating from heaven, if it's only the white keys, you'll not be able to play his music. If it's only the black keys, They'll not be able to play his music that it takes the congregation and the combination of white keys and black keys to play the music of God coming from heaven. And just like you are clapping, everybody began to clap. And after that, they invited me back. They said, we need you back in Russia. And then after that, they said, we need your people that you have taught. We need them in the Christian Pentecostal Union of Churches. And we sent uh, two or three pastors there. And then they said, we need a church like this in Russia. That's how deeper life got to Russia. Because the Holy Spirit is the quickness spirit. Makes you quick. Makes you quick. The answer you wouldn't have had, the Holy Ghost will give unto you. Yeah. After this day, you will go many places. Yeah. You will reach many places. Yeah. Don't, don't think, what are you going to say? Don't worry about that. The Holy Ghost will quicken you. Yeah. Well, uh, in Portsmouth, that's in England. And 
the assemblies of God and the alien, they have invited me, I preach here, I preach here. And so there was a psychology professor. I didn't study psychology, I only did a little bit. I did, um, you know, mathematics, and so that's not my field. And the psychology, philosophy, um, you know, psychology and philosophy. A professor was there, he was fascinated, and he, he told the pastor, take me to this man. And he took me to the man, and he took the, the man to me. And um, so the prof said, I have philosophy, psychology class. Can I bring them together in my class for you? The next class, can you come? Ever say no. What do you say? Yes. I said yes. Can you, they, they said they'll take just 30 minutes of your time and they will ask a lot of questions. I said, all right, understand. I didn't study philosophy. I didn't study psychology. And he took me, and the children, those <laughs> university students, if you know university students, eager, passionate, and they were all gathered there. And um, they wanted to know about Africa, so I gave them a lecture, impromptu, on Africa. And I told him about this, about this, about the climate, about the politics, about the people, about, you know, everything. Now they wanted to ask questions. I said, all right. And they began to throw their questions. And there were questions they asked. I never heard any question like that before. I never responded to any question like that before. And immediately they asked the question, they will never ask you the question that the Holy Ghost does not have answer. And when the Holy Ghost abides in you, the answer will come. And as student rose up and asked, asked this, I said, that's not simple. When I said that simple, I didn't know what I would say, but I just said that simple, and then something came out. It was the exact answer that he, need, that he needed. Another one asked, I said, that, that's right, that's right. And then I answered the question, we took, after my 30 minutes presentation, we took 45 minutes answering questions. And none of them said, no, pastor, that's not right. I'll tell you what is right. Every one of them knew that is the answer because the Holy Ghost is a quickening spirit. It quickens your brain. It quickens your mind. And the things you didn't know before, quick, 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 it will come. It will not fail you. I'm telling you all this for you to understand. The next level where God is taking you to. When you get there, don't worry about anything. The quickening spirit will be with you. And then is the reviving spirit. Is the restraining spirit. You see, Paul the Apostle with uh, Silas, they wanted to go here. That's in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. The Holy Ghost said, don't go. They wanted to go to Troas. The Holy Ghost said, don't go. It's a restraining spirit. And then in chapter 19, he said, Come on now, come on now. You're going to that same Asia Minor and special miracles took place in Asia Minor. That even the anchor ship that was taken from his body, healing the sick and delivering the oppressed. Why? Because the Holy Ghost restrained him. Don't go yet. And then go now. And a revival broke out. There's a breakthrough in front of you. As you rely on the Holy Spirit, remember, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flow over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. I come to S now. Is the sanctifying spirit. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 13. The sanctifying spirit. But 
we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. We'll always give thanks for you Amen. on your behalf. We'll hear of the good deeds the Holy Ghost is doing. We'll hear of the wonderful things that now start in your ministry. And when we're here, we'll be glad we were in Abia for this minister's conference. Yeah. You were fainting before, no more fainting. Yeah. You were fearful before, no more fear. You were fretting before, no more worry and anxiety. You now come on a higher plane. Yeah. And you walk on the highway. And it says, we're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. You be the beloved of the Lord because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. I am chosen. I am chosen. And it says through sanctification of the Spirit. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Well, you may not know why we need sanctification. We're saved already. That's what he said from the beginning. He has chosen you to salvation. And you thought, I'm saved and that is all. My brother, my sister, that's not all. There is something inside the heart. Is the propensity to go back. Is the propensity to faint. Is the propensity to make mistakes. Is the propensity to, you want to go this direction, that propensity is there to go the wrong direction. Is the propensity that Christ wants to remove at that sanctification. There is a depravity deep inside, inside our heart. Inside our spirit, there is a natural thing that's there. It came at the time of Adam and Eve, and the children, they had after that, they, they bore after their own image. There is that Adamic image inside. And after we are saved, the Spirit of God says, What your God is good, but not enough. I mean, of us know we can have something good, and yet it's not enough. I have a car, but I don't have a driving license. The car is good, but it's not enough. I have the car, but I do not have the key to put in there and move that watch of God is good, but it's not enough. I have the car, and I want to go somewhere. There's no map, and I don't have any, any direction to lead me there. The car is good, but it's not good enough. Salvation is good. You're born again, and your sins are forgiven, and your past is taken care of, but he wants to take care of the present. He wants to take care of the future. He wants to sanctify you. And he is the sanctifying spirit. He says, he's chosen us unto salvation through sanctification of the spirit and believe of the truth. You see, the spirit of God is the truthful spirit. The truthful spirit. And he's the one. He knows the truth that will get his soul saved. Here you are an evangelist and you come on stage and you have the references you wanted to read and all of a sudden there's somebody there who came he came there for a particular purpose and then you point right there and he almost dodged because you are pointing at him and you say something that you didn't plan to say before it was the truth that he needed. And that truth caught him and drew him and brought him into the kingdom. The Lord will fill you with the truthful spirit in Jesus' name. In John chapter 16, I'm reading here from verse 12. In John chapter 16, verse 12, I have yet 
many things to say unto you. Here is Jesus talking to his own disciples. He chose them that they might be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to heal. And for those three years, they followed him everywhere. They heard the sermon on the mount. They were there. They heard the sermon that he preached in Luke chapter 6. They were here. They heard all the answers he gave to all the questions of the Herodians. They were there. And yet, with all they had heard, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you. You see, there are people that think they've known everything. Holding a crusade, I know how to do that. Oh, how to preach, I know how to do that. How to address the congregation, I know how to do that. I've been doing that now for a few years, but it says I have yet many things to say unto you. But he cannot bear them now. They could have protested. What do you mean, Jesus? You have something to tell us? We cannot bear them now. Yes. You see, that's why it said, go your way. Do not go to the Samaritans and do not go to the Gentiles. Only go to the house of Israel. Why? They couldn't understand how salvation will come to the Gentiles. He knew their level. That's why I said, that's why it was stayed. But now, when the Holy Ghost has come, look at verse 13. In verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The spirit of truth, the truthful spirit. You are a minister, a preacher. While you are preaching, you want to say something that will excite the people, that will make your message believable. And then you write there while you are standing, you conjure a story. You make up a story. And that story is not true. You embellish that story. And you put some interesting sentences which in your mind, you have not spoken it. And the Holy Ghost said, hey, I'm here. The spirit of truth. If you say that, that will not be true. And the spirit of truth will not work with your lie. Will not work with your deceptive testimony. And you have, if you are obeying the spirit of God, you have to shut that up because the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. From today, the Lord will guide you in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. amen. You are going to get married. If you are not married yet. Amen. If you are not married yet, don't raise up your hand, but God will guide you. Amen. Now, you want to tell this beloved sister, and you want her to get interested. And you want her to understand bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And then you want to tell stories, you want to exaggerate. Hey, young man, the Holy Ghost says, I'm the one leading you to this. You don't have to tell her anything. Tell her the real truth. Tell her, if you didn't see a vision, don't talk about vision. If you didn't uh, hear a voice, audible voice, don't talk about audible voice. Tell the truth. And the Holy Ghost, knowing that you are telling the truth, will register in the heart of that lady. 
And the only answer she would have is yes. Can somebody say yes over there? Yes. And it will happen. Yes. You look, you're looking for a job. And you want to, you know, they call you for it. You have to say this way, say it that way, then say it that way, and present yourself to be who you are not. You know, you know, the Holy Ghost will say, if you want me to open the way for you, I am the spirit of truth. Tell nothing but the truth. My brother, you'll get that job. Yeah. Beloved sister, you'll get that job. Anywhere we go, we don't have to cover up anything. What am I covering up? If I made a mistake and, you know, somebody pointed it out, we don't have to cover it up. Oh, because you are Pastor Kumoi, because they know how high you are. No, if the man is able to make a mistake, is also able to make a different thing. I always say is, oh, I forgot myself. I shouldn't have presented it like that. I am sorry. It was a mistake. And the Lord will take that mistake and make a miracle for you. So he is the truthful spirit. He is the uniting spirit. The uniting spirit. You know, there's enough division in the world. There is enough conflict in the world. And there is uh, enough discouragement in the world as we come together now. <laughs> what do you think? This uh, man is of the higher life church. This other man is of the bigger, mega church. Uh, what are we fighting for? Are we fighting for members? Why? All the members belong to Christ. If they belong to Christ, but they don't live inside my house, that's all right. If they belong to Christ, and they don't live and they don't worship in my congregation, great. Because Christ is greater than my denomination. Do you accept that? Yes. Christ is greater than your denomination. And wherever we are, wherever we are pastoring, from the right, from the front, from everywhere, we come together, we're united. You and I are united. Me and you, we're united. Whether we like it or not, when we get to heaven, if you don't like me, if that's all your problem, me, but you are born again, but you live a righteous life, only you don't like me, okay? What don't you like about me? I'm used to somebody standing in one place and preaching, Everything he wants to preach. I'm not just, you know, a preacher goes this way, he walks that way. That's what you don't like. But you know I'm a Christian, and you are a Christian. When we get to heaven, the Lord might surprise you. This man you don't like. Your mansion will be exactly beside the mansion of the man. And you have no choice. That's where you will stay for all eternity. Like me, because I like you. I said I like you. I like everything about you. When you are talking, when you are preaching, and you, you, you talk, you talk, um, you know, English language, and then you inject a powerful evil language. I don't understand, but I like it. I said I like it. We're united together. I said we're united together. Ephesians chapter 4. And here we're reading in verse 2, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. I don't understand why 
sounds like that, forbearing one another in love. I don't understand why he uses, you know, this, this, this. I don't, I don't appreciate that. Don't worry. Just let us forbear each other, one another in love. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, endeavoring to keep, endeavoring, doing your best, doing everything you can do to keep the unity of the Spirit. It's the uniting Spirit. And when we yield to Him, when we surrender to Him to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Peace in every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. V is the vision imparting spirit. The vision imparting spirit. You remember, he'll pour his spirit upon us and then we'll see visions. Time came for Peter that the Lord showed him a vision that's in uh, Acts chapter 10 and the Lord said rise heal and eat he had seen all those four-footed animals immediately Leviticus came to his mind those are unclean animals immediately the term he came to his mind those are unclean animals Peter do you know the interpretation of the Bible more than the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. You are misinterpreting the vision. And eventually, the people that were sent from Cornelius, they came. They were knocking at the door. And the Spirit said in that vision, I have sent them. They are waiting for you. Go with them. Eventually, he went with them. And while he was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the Holy Ghost came on them as on us at the beginning. And he knew this vision was imparted by the Holy Spirit. Then he came back to Jerusalem in chapter 11. And all the apostles were waiting for him, every one of them. We heard you went to the Gentiles and you even ate with them. You have done the unthinkable, he said. I was like you are. I didn't want to go, but the Spirit bade me go. He left it like that. The point I want to make is this. In chapter 12, Herod wanted to kill him. Chapter 10, the vision came. Chapter 11, he was challenged. Now chapter 12, Herod put him in prison. Now, if he had not obeyed the vision because of his own mentality, because of his own tradition, if he had not obeyed, if he had said, God, Whatever you are saying, whatever you are changing, all that I'm not part of. Nothing unclean or common had ever entered into my mouth. If he was so rigid with God because of the fear of the other apostles which will confront him in chapter 11, now he was in the prison. And the next day, Herod wanted to take his life to please the Jews. And that very night, Peter was sleeping. He couldn't even, you know, have a night vigil because of what was coming. But the church was praying for him. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. And the Lord sent an angel and tapped him. And he rose up. Put on your sandals. He put on the sandals. Follow me. And the soldiers that were changed to him, they were deeply asleep. And when the chain dropped, whatever noise the chain made, they didn't wake up. And they went, they got to the iron door. It opened automatically. 
of its own. He got to the second one, it opened on its own. And now the angel said, didn't say, but to show by action, action is louder than words, bye bye. And he said, the Lord has delivered me. My question is, if he wasn't obedient to the vision in chapter 10, and he allowed Cornelius and his people, many of them, to perish in ignorance, remaining only with their good works, not having the salvation of the Lord, if he were disobedient to the heavenly vision, will the Lord send an angel to deliver him? Think about that. The Holy Spirit is the vision imparting spirit. Not only that, he is, we're looking at W now, is the warning spirit. The warning spirit. The Bible says in First Timothy chapter 4, Reading from verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're looking at verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is the one in by the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 2, in verse 2, it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The Holy Spirit will warn us of dangers to come. And the danger will not catch up with you. Yeah. Danger will not destroy your life yeah. Will not stop your way Will not destroy your ministry because we have the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is the warning spirit. They are taking a decision, and the repercussion, the consequence will be terrible on you, terrible on your family, terrible on your ministry, terrible on your profession. The Lord will prevent every dangerous thing from, the, from your life in Jesus' name. You wanted to say something. And if you said that thing, and the people here, and they were looking for something before, they say, now, it's no more here. See, we're catching. We've heard him. The Lord will deliver you from that in Jesus' name. You're walking prayerfully. You're walking carefully. You are walking faithfully because danger is near. And the Holy Spirit will warn you before that time. You will not fall. Yeah. You will not be destroyed. Yeah. Because the spirit that lives in you is the warning spirit. X is the extreme spirit. Extreme spirit. What's an extreme? You know, sometimes there's something inside your body. You feel it, but you cannot see it. You know, it's working some harm there, but you cannot see. And then you go to the medical, professional, expert doctor. And he says, yes, madam, let's go on this x-ray here. Lie on it like this. And you do, and you put all those uh, machines and lower it, and they see everything. It appears on the computer by your side, and you say, Madam, look at that, look at that. Yeah, the x ray that reveals what is hidden. And the Lord, the spiritual x ray by the Spirit. Look at Acts chapter 5. Reading from verse 3, here comes Ananias, and he wanted to play the trick on Peter the apostle. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of 
the land. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You know the story. How would Peter have known? How would Peter have detected that? There's no way but the extreme spirit abiding in him made him to see that. Why is the yoke breaking spirit? The yoke breaking spirit. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 10 Verse 27, and he shall come, it shall come to pass in that day. And this is your day. Yes. I said, This is your day. Yes. That his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. Yes. A better amen. Yes. And his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed the yoke shall be destroyed the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing you know in our lives the yokes that may be there on your neck tying you to another individual like a yoke between the horse and the ass and when you yoke the horse with the ass the ass is unintelligent the ass is not fast in movement the ass is not strong the horse is more intelligent the horse is faster. The horse is mightier in strength. When they are yoked together, the horse cannot go very far. And there are some of us in life. In the past, when we didn't know God will call us into ministry, we didn't know where God will take us to. We have been yoked with the ass of a man, the ass of a woman, the ass of a company director, the ass of a project. And now we're getting the vision, we're getting the power, we're getting the excitement and the, the horsepower within us wants to gallop and go and go and go higher. But we're so yoked to the other fellow that is saying, okay, go ahead. I'm still here, behind. And you realize what is happening. And you cannot move again. Today, the anointing that breaks the yoke will come upon your life. I don't know how. I don't know who. Whatever it is, drawing you back. The yoke breaking spirit comes upon your life today yeah. you will do everything God has ordained you will do yeah. you will reach everywhere the Lord has ordained you will reach yeah. your place is not in the valley your place is on the top of the mountain yeah. What is the person that believes that? You are going to get there. Yeah. No matter the yoke that has, you know, drawn you back in the past, you are going higher. Yeah. You are moving faster. Yeah. And every yoke will be broken by the anointing in your life. Yeah. Say, that's for me. That's for, me. That's for me. The things are given up. And I felt 
no way for me. Now God has made the way for you. The yoke breaking spirit now comes upon your life. Said the zeal generating spirit. The zeal generating spirit. You understand generating generator. There's a generator there. And when there's no light, somebody goes there and he puts on the generator. Sometimes in the country, the uh, grid and all the things that bring electricity and light, the thing is shut off in our community. But thank God you have a generator there. And then you might go there yourself. You might tell, you know, somebody working with you, can you please help on put the generator on? And it doesn't take more than a minute or two. And your light that has gone off will come back. The generator spiritually is the Holy Spirit. When you see that everything is down, everything is cold, everything lukewarm, everything were all hands down, if you remember the generator, and God will put on that generator for you. Yeah. The zeal that died down, that zeal will come back. Power will come back. Yeah. Energy will come back. Authority will come back. Yeah. The zeal generating spirit. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an element of salvation upon his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. With zeal as a cloak. Like a cloak, like a, like, um, a cloth, the Lord will put it on you. And all the garments of weakness you wore before, everything now is gone. Yeah. Here is Elijah. We've seen him on a high. We've seen him bringing the fire down. We've seen him crossing River Jordan. And Elisha was there. And Elisha was thinking, if I could have what this man has, no doubt I will fulfill my ministry. And the 50 sons of the prophets came and they said, Do you know the Lord is taking your master away from your head today? He said, I know it with your knowledge is going away today, and you know what he has done. You are sons of the prophets. What are you asking? Don't disturb me with your information. And he kept on following. And they were at Gilgal. And Elijah said, stay here. He said, as the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave you. And he went on. And he got to Bethel. And Elijah said, Elisha, this is too much for you. How can you just be following me? I know the power that drives me and how I move. Stay here. There are sons of the prophets here. Why don't you stay here? You can be in fellowship with them. As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not wait here. I'm going with you. And so they go to Jordan. No boat, nothing to cross over. Elijah removed his outer coat. And he said, where is the Lord? And then he smote Jordan. And he went over. And Elisha ran and went over Elisha. If you go with him now, when he's taken away, how are you going to come back? There's no boat. Leave that alone. The Lord will take care of that. In your life, the Lord will take care of that. You are going this way now. How do you come back? Don't worry. The Lord will take care of that. 
everything that concerns your life, the Lord will take care of that. And so they cross over. And for the first time, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask me what I will do for you. There's no limit. Ask me what I'll give you. There is no limitation. Ask me what I will give you before I be taken away from you. And he said, let, tell me, a double portion of thy spirit fall upon me. He said, you have asked a hard thing, but if you see me as I'm going up, it will be so. This morning in your life, it will be so. Double portion, it will be so. Double power, it will be so. Double zeal, it will be so. And the chariot came from heaven and took him and he said, My father, my father, and the chariots of Israel, and the mantle dropped. And Elisha took that mantle. No word, no sentence, nothing from Elijah. You're hearing the final amen, and you see something dropping. Nothing, nothing. But he knew you, you will know. This is the double portion I was asking for. He picked it up. He removed his own garment, the garment of weakness. And then he got to Jordan. When he got to Jordan, he said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he took that mantle, not the old mantle he had, that was comfortable for him, the new mantle. And he smote River Jordan, and River Jordan parted. What Elijah did, Elisha now begins to do. With all the humility, I pass it on to you. Yeah. That what God has done through me, and much more, God has done through me, the spirit that comes upon you, the power that comes upon you, the fire that comes upon you, you will do the same, you will do greater. Open your mouth and say, Lord, a double portion. Lord, the double portion. Lord, the double portion. Let it come upon me. You are ready for a new breakthrough. A new breakthrough in the new ministry of the Spirit Empowered Minister. Pray unto the Lord. This is your time. This is your day. Open your mouth.